I don't want you wasting my time with conversations. Like I want to focus on what's the solution you're going to provide and how do we most efficiently get to that solution. And that's the type of service I'm attracted to because I want you as a service provider to be really clear on the impact you're going to make in my business and be really clear how we're going to get there. One of our most valuable resources is time and client meetings can quickly eat it up. But there's an expectation that if you're working with clients on a retainer in an ongoing and recurring way, that you have to have meetings, you know, just to touch base or because meetings should be included in the service or because they somehow deliver some kind of inherent value. But meetings are a huge limitation when it comes to scaling a service business. If there's only so much of you to go around, is spending time in meetings really the best bet for delivering great value and growing a business? You're listening to Break the Ceiling, the show where we break down unconventional strategies you can use to save time, boost your profit, and increase your operational capacity. I'm your host, Susan Bowles. When you deeply understand your clients and what problem you're solving for them, and you've delivered your service a bunch of times, sometimes those meetings can get repetitive, or they could just be unnecessary. The questions your clients ask end up being all the same kinds of questions, or not much has really changed month to month. So what if meetings aren't really all that valuable for you or your clients, and there might be a better way to manage retainers without having those weekly or monthly calls at all and still deliver the same value or maybe even more? Parker Stevenson is the co-owner of bookkeeping company Evolved Finance. They specialize in bookkeeping for online businesses. Bookkeepers are the stewards of your business's financial data. They're the ones that make sure the numbers you're working from are accurate and current. But the nature of the business is very much doing pretty much the same thing every month. It's a business that is ripe for being scalable, if you approach it that way. And Evolved Finance definitely does. Parker and his partner, Corey, have spent the last year experimenting with different ways to deliver their monthly bookkeeping service without having regularly scheduled calls. Parker and I talk about how his project to change the paradigm on client meetings has evolved over the last year how he shifted from those regular meetings to recorded Loom videos, and then to a training resource library and group office hours, and how he found that knowing his clients was key to being able to develop new ways to deliver amazing value without having to get mired in weeks of call after call after call. All right, Parker, thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited to uh, dig into this with you. I think this is going to be a fun conversation. Hey, thank you, Susan, for having me. Anytime anyone's excited to talk to someone with a bookkeeping business, I, I'm all in on that. Oh, I'm so, I I can so geek out on bookkeeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I love talking bookkeeping. So uh, let's talk about, in, in your bookkeeping business, you guys have been playing around a little bit with um, how you're delivering monthly reporting, how you're delivering kind of those regular client contact points. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of dig into that and talk to me a little bit about how you all are approaching those client meetings. Yeah. So just to give uh, your listeners a a little more context around what we do, you know, we're a bookkeeping business or bookkeeping agency that supports online businesses. um, And I cannot um, emphasize enough how important it's been for our business model to really have a niche so we can build really strong operational procedures. So for us, what we, how we've kind of built uh, of all finance and I, I came in a little later uh, my business partner was the founder and I came in, uh, he really founded in like 2010, but he had been doing bookkeeping for online businesses even before then. And then I came in about 2014 and partnered up with them to help grow the business. And a big thing of what made of all finance successful was the fact that we were, or, you know, Corey was doing a monthly call with each client to go over their numbers and help them understand what's going on. Because the, the, one of the big issues in our industry is just financial professionals uh, being willing to explain and help entrepreneurs understand their numbers. And so that's why I got involved in the business because I thought Corey was just doing it right. He was doing, he was taking care of a service that most people don't want to take care of. You know, there's not a lot of people out there super excited to open up bookkeeping uh, companies, let alone to build a bookkeeping agency where um, the work was being done properly, which um, Mm -hmm. still five years into this, I'm still shocked at the books we get from other bookkeepers and how poorly they're done, how little focus there is around like 
putting the numbers together in a way that makes sense. So like all that was great, but I really thought the support Corey gave his clients and helping them understand what was going on with their businesses was just really smart because in our industry, it doesn't always attract the type of person, like especially with accountants and bookkeepers that wants that like necessarily wants to provide a high level of customer service. And yeah, that's advisory a little... is definitely a, uh, a a new skill to the industry. I have yes. to say, and, and, and it's I'm not surprising how resistant how resistant a lot of folks are still to providing that that advisory component to bookkeeping or accounting. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm sure there's other people out there that are that are great in our experience overall. Most of our clients, when they come to us, are pretty disappointed with with their other experiences. So uh, that's been a, a huge advantage for us. Um, so when I came into the business, we built up a client load for me, so I could learn the industry, I could learn the the business, I could learn our clients' businesses. But like you know, we were just talking about before, and like I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast, and, and with the theme being around meetings, quickly Corey and I every week, you know, had a bunch of calls and. And we have to manage a team and we, we kind of knew we were going to um, max ourselves out eventually. We just wanted to boost the cash flow and, and get there and then we'd figure it out from there. So um, and, and we built a really strong reputation by, you know, having those calls and by um, really getting to understand our clients pain points and understand their business models because of all those one-on-one -on -one calls, but obviously like for our business to grow, we had to uh, make some adjustments. So what we did this year uh, was we transitioned the majority of our call clients to monthly videos. So that way, this has kind of been our baby steps and a lot of our clients um, don't necessarily know it's a baby step per se, but we wanted to get the call because a lot of the times the calls become repetitive and mm -hmm. eventually we start to see clients like, like you said, sometimes they don't want to show up on a call every month. They're like, really do I'm busy. I got other things going. And, um, it's not always necessarily necessary for us to be talking with our clients every single month, especially when we have a lot of clients who we've been working with for years and years and years. So we, we took the jump and really adjusted our service model this year where they could get monthly videos instead of calls where, uh, Corey, myself, or one of our our account managers can record a 10 to 15 minute video going over the numbers. So it's more consolidated, still gives them the support they need. Um, but what we've now realized even for this year, those have gotten repetitive as well. And it's kind of 50, 50, whether or not the client watches the video. So going into 2020, we're making a big transition to where, um, we will be doing two group calls a week. And, and I can talk more about if you're interested in where we got this idea from, because I want to give credit where it's due. Um, but we're really excited about this new model because what it's going to do is it's going to free up all of our account managers from having to record these videos where again, it's very repetitive. And although it's helpful in the beginning, eventually it's not as helpful. Um, we're replacing that those videos with two group calls a week Plus, we're launching our client learning center, which is just a digital plat uh, digital course platform uh, through Teachable that has a lot of the common questions, a lot of the educational material that we want to teach our clients and want them to understand available to them. So not only do they have a digital resource that they can reference, account managers can reference for our client, you know, say, hey, you know, thanks for your question. You know, maybe the client emails an account manager via email and goes, Hey, thanks for the question. Um, instead of me explaining it all in this email, you really need to watch this video in the client learning center. Cause it's going to give, it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. And when you combine that with the, the, the two group calls, we're going to do a week for all of our clients. I think it's going to be able to provide a ton more value because I can answer more of the strategic calls, do it in a more consolidated amount of time, and our clients can learn from each other. And so this, that's really the sort of, I guess, transitional story for us is going from a business that's been strictly one-on-one -on -one calls every month with every single client to now a situation where some of our clients don't get any calls at all. Some of them are doing videos and you know, eventually going into a, a a system where everyone's just going to be jumping on the group calls and using the client learning center as their means to uh, get their extra learning, you know, get their, their extra, that extra bookkeeping financial education support that no one else is really doing but us. Yeah. I, I think that's interesting because so much of being so much of the advisory part of bookkeeping and accounting is really just teaching some financial literacy, teaching about, how to interpret, how to understand your finances, where what's important to pay attention to. It's interesting that you guys are developing kind of a, a learning center around that. Yeah, and that's a big part of our, our bookkeeping services. Again, I think the fundamental flaw for most accounting firms slash bookkeeping 
businesses is they put together their numbers just for the accountant to file the taxes, especially yep. for small businesses. They just go, eh, like we'll do it at the end of the year. You don't need that information. And the reality is like, you do need that information as a business owner. We feel that it's like, especially because all of our clients are coming to us making at least a hundred thousand dollars a year or more. They have cash flow. They have money going in and out of the business. And as I'm sure you're aware, Susan, is once your business um, is making money, half the battle is okay. Let's keep new leads and new sales coming in. But the other half becomes how do I manage my cash flow? How do I invest in the right parts of my business? How do I keep my expenses under control so I do have a profitable business that can operate from its cash flow and uh, stay healthy? And so we feel like that's such an under under educated part of especially online entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. there's so much I don't want to say misinformation, but I think there's a lot of confusing information around finance because so much of business finance typically revolves around corporate finance, which is a completely it's just different totally beast. Different. Yeah, it's it's much more sophisticated. Uh, so much of our clients' businesses from a business model, even if they're a multi seven figure business Financially, it's still very straightforward. It's still cash basis accounting. It's a very straightforward business model. You just need someone to organize the data in a way that makes it clear and easy to understand. And so we've just put that as at the forefront of our service. So it allows us to charge a more premium price because we're putting in the effort to do the work properly and on time. Plus we're educating our clients around what that information means because our clients businesses tend to grow after hiring us because they start to look at their business from a financial standpoint, which is why we're trying to double down so much on continuing to scale the educational side because the bookkeeping side is easy to scale. The educational um, handholding part of this service model is where we've really had to, you know, experiment and figure some things out to see how do we, how do we keep what our original clients love about us and how do we keep that energy and that, um, value proposition alive as we start to scale into, you know, next year we'll be pushing to get up to about 150 clients. So, you know, if for a bookkeeping agency, uh, uh you know, that, that's a pretty good pretty chunk of business plus, to be yeah. managing. So talk to me a little bit about these um, calls that you're planning, the the weekly calls. Is that going to kind of operate as like a like an office hours kind of thing or is there a different intention? Like yeah, no, I mean, that, that, questions? no, that's 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 um, kind of how I was looking at it originally. And um, we've been doing a monthly group call, testing it out. And so what happens is, you know, we have account managers that manage you know, uh, that interact with the clients, make sure that the PLs look right, make sure the books are done right, answer basic questions. Excuse me, but with with Corey, my business partner, and our knowledge and experience uh, working with online businesses, we're able to provide more insight and guidance than really any bookkeeper or accountant would be able to do. Because again, that's the importance, importance of us having niched down to a specific mm -hmm. industry. We know this industry in like the back of my hand. You could throw anyone's P&L in front of me and I'll be able to, you know, give you paint a really clear picture of what's going on in your business, where the opportunities are, where there's issues that goes beyond tax prep, that goes beyond um, like more just core financial conversations, like really business model, marketing, the full picture. And so we don't want, number one, we don't think there's an expectation that we can train our account managers in a really short period of time to absorb all the knowledge Corey and I have accumulated since 2010. So what we really want is we want the core of the service, the core of the bookkeeping service to revolve around the account manager and the bookkeeper because each one of our clients gets an account manager and a bookkeeper. So we have checks and balances. There's two people looking at the file. We feel really good that there's no better bookkeeping system out there for getting really high quality, very accurate bookkeeping. So we know our team can take care of that, but we also know our clients have valued the interactions they've had with Corey and I over the years so much that by having this office hours, those that want to answer questions and, or want like to have more strategic questions, those um, that want to dig a little deeper into business strategy and their, and their business model as a whole. Um, we're kind of setting ourselves up to have certain calls be sort of like hot seats, um, 
I think every Thursday, what we're going to do is have it be a Q&A, open Q&A call. But every Tuesday, we're going to have calls that might be a little more specific around like businesses doing half a million or less hot seats, businesses doing half a million or more hot seats, um, bringing experts in like um, financial advisors and lawyers and accountants and uh, marketing experts and operations experts to have conversations and, and help give our clients, you know, more of an opportunity to learn about the other aspects of their business because so many of them are so good at the market marketing and sales side, we're kind mm-hmm. of taking this as an opportunity to help um, connect them to the other pieces of their business that maybe doesn't get talked about as much. So I'm, I'm at this point, I feel pretty clear about um, some of the other topics I want to cover on these calls and some of the other ways we can structure the calls. But I'm also been, you know, an entrepreneur long enough now to know that we have a really great plan right now, but at the end of the day, we'll probably evolve and adjust it as we get more feedback from the clients and we see what really helps them. So you've been, you've been running the Q and A calls monthly for a while. How have you, um, have you noticed or has anybody been resistant at all? You know, some people are kind of weird about their finances. Are they, do they have a hard time showing up on a group call and talking about their own financial picture of their business with other people on the phone? Well, we are trying to break that taboo because mm-hmm. I think that is um, bullcrap, to yeah. be honest. Well, I mean, and it's it's harmful. You know, we all get sold this bill of goods that people are making tons and tons of sales and nobody knows what the back end of their business looks Absolutely. like or if they're profitable at all. 100%. And so that's kind of the benefit. So all of our clients that show up to the group calls, they've signed an NDA. So we're protecting everyone mm-hmm. legally to go, hey, you can't go sharing any of the information that people are talking about here because it's so uh, financially driven in general. What we're seeing is that our clients that have been around with us a long time and um, already know pretty much everything we have to share um, they're not showing up to these calls. They don't really need it. They got the benefit mm. of getting a lot of one-on-one time in the early days of our business. Cause ultimately the only thing we want our clients to rely on is for them to rely on us to do the books and data, you know, the data management of their financial information. That's what we want them to rely us on. We're trying to educate and build our clients confidence around how to make good decisions and, um, and prudent decisions around their numbers, you know, in terms of what to invest in, how to alter, you know, how to uh, adjust their businesses, the profitability changes, all these sort of basic things that um, a lot of those early clients, they're good. They don't really need the group calls. But what we're seeing is that our new clients, especially we've had our biggest year of growth ever. We've had a lot of new prospects. I've told them, hey, just so you know, these changes are coming into next year and they're all really thrilled about it because they're able to... um, they're just excited to have a, I think a community and a group where number one, they have someone like Corey and I to answer the questions that a lot of people in our industry either BS their way through pretending like they know, (laughs) or um, don't know at all and just don't even breach the subject. Um, But also just, just excited that there's even a bookkeeping service that does anything like this whatsoever. And I think our clients really value the insight that we have because we do have a unique insight. You know, we, Corey and I are working with a lot of really big people in this industry. We know how their businesses work. We know what the numbers look like. We know what a healthy business looks like that everyone's, you know, everyone's been really excited, which has been really, um, a relief for Corey and I, because I I think every business owner here feels like whenever they make a change, especially with a service-based business, it feels scarier when you make a change because you're interacting with these people um, Mm -hmm. on a monthly basis or weekly basis or however your business model is set up that um, we, it always feels like it's going to be scarier than it is. But even with the adjustments we made this year, going to the uh, videos and starting monthly group calls and stuff like that, like our clients get it, they understand. And I think um, the new ones are even more thrilled. They, they, I think we have more structure and more clarity around what our service is and what it is we do and don't do. And I think that's ultimately what any business that's hiring another business they're working with wants, like, just be clear about what you're doing for me, how this service works, and I'll decide whether or not it's a good fit for my business. And so I think we're seeing a really positive uh, reaction already to what we have planned for next year. And I think it makes sense. It's inter- the, the group calls are interesting because um, it's something that you guys are able to do primarily because you have picked an, a niche. You've You've drilled down into one kind of business model, essentially one kind of client. And so they're getting on a call with a whole bunch of people that have the same kind of business model that they Mm -hmm. do and are talking about the same 
issues in a way that you don't have if it's a different kind of business. You know, a retail brick and mortar business doesn't have a whole lot in common with an online course creator in terms of business problems other than, you know. Oh, totally agree. Money type, you know, cash flow is unique, is universal, but how you go about managing in that and what what you have to consider are totally different problems. Yeah. And that's, that's the issue with the financial world in general, like account accounting and bookkeeping practices in general is they work with uh, too many different types of businesses and they, you, you can, you just get mediocre at, at servicing a bunch of different types of businesses or even less than mediocre, or you take the strategy that I think we're taking, which is, well, then let's not be, I don't want to be mediocre. I want us to provide a service that makes our clients go, wow, like where has this been my whole life? And I truly believe as a service provider, I don't, I really think for any type of agency or service model, the more you specialize and, and niche down, um, like our business has grown dramatically by niching, niching down. It makes it easier for us to build out our operational practices or SOPs, uh, like all of that, the more focused we get and the more committed we are to, to only looking for our, our, our ideal clients, you're absolutely right. Like all the pieces have come together in terms of being able to do the group calls, being able to train team members fast enough um, to be able to keep up with the growth we're having. Like all of that has come from uh, just being super specific about who we, who we serve. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed the same changes as well. When I started niching down into just service businesses is it's the same kind of problems, the same kinds of structures. And it really does allow you to, scale like that is a critical piece of being able to scale i really think any business um and i know there's there's a big debate over generalist versus niching but when it comes to service-based businesses i think niching is so powerful in terms of allowing you to scale pretty much every aspect of your business well and i think it's especially for a small business like you don't have the luxury of being able to have the time and the financial resources to market to a really really broad audience i mean it's a different Mm -hmm. thing i guess with i don't know maybe retail or e-commerce or something like that um but when you're talking like the types of businesses we're serving like uh we we don't work with any e-com businesses it's all service-based all digital content Uh, pretty much anyone online who's not selling physical inventory and so for for that it's like to get a business off the ground you like starting with a very specific niche and then building the cash flow and the team and the operations necessary to then be able to expand down the road i mean even looking i mean i i hate to draw comparisons to to corporate america to the sort of businesses we serve but when you think about amazon they were just selling books and now look at them. You know, they, they mm-hmm. had success in one niche. It creates more cash flow opportunity. You know, you have more to work with now if you want to expand. You have resources to expand versus when you're, um, you know, a, a small business. Uh, you, j- you just don't have that luxury to try to um, operationally and financially grow your your target market by too much because then what we've seen is our clients business their po- their profit just it takes a nosedive um because now you need to spend all this money supporting all these other i guess revenue streams or target mm-hmm. markets that then um it's just not financially profitable to do so based on the size of the business so um i, I i'm a like to take bold opinions susan <laughs> i'm an opinionated guy so i would say I, I the generalist thing i would argue all day with a generalist that for a new business or really any business doing less than a couple million and even then i'd say all the way up to 10 million the more focused you are the the better i, I it's just that's the success we've seen with our clients we see it time and time again same same with me and my clients okay so let's um Let's dive back into specifically your meetings and let's talk about how you've been managing it this year um, with your video calls um, or video reports. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you how you operationalize that? How did you actually, um, what was the structure and what was the interaction with your clients? Yeah, so the, the way our, our service works is... Um, each month, our clients get a set of reports, like very specific PL um, reports that we want them looking at. And so, with those reports, if they're getting, if they're paying for a video 
call or a video recording, then with those reports, an account manager would be reviewing those reports, explaining what they're seeing, explaining if there's any issues or opportunities, um, and just making sure they kind of understand what's going on with the PNL. It, it's it's a very basic, straightforward. Like we're not, there's no way for us to dive into the video. Uh, there's no way for us to dive into the video content the way we would if we had a one-on-one -on -one call with the clients. Um, but ultimately, it's it's a matter for a lot of other clients, like a lot of our clients who are intimidated by seeing reports, by seeing mm -hmm. numbers. Um, it's an opportunity for someone to be walking through that with them. So they go, oh, okay, I see what's going on there. So the account manager managers record these videos using, um, God, I'm so glad I found them. They've been so phenomenal, but cloud app. And it's just a screen capture software that makes it easy to host the videos on the cloud. Um, pull a link to that video really easily, drop it in the email. So there's no uploading videos anywhere. It all just does it in one place. It's easy to manage sort of the, the backlog of videos and see who you've done videos for or not. Um, and so, uh, yeah, with cloud app has just been a, a really great resource for, for our team to be able to, and we use it actually even beyond just for the clients, uh, even just to answer questions sometimes like, uh, if a client emails, uh, one of our account managers or Corey and I, sometimes I don't want to type a one page email to get back to them. So I'll record <laughs> a quick cloud app, uh, video and send it to them, um, that way. But that's been the, the big key is using software like that to make the process very simple and, and easy. So it's, you know, get into the reports click on the um, video recording, it records it, it up, you know, you can pull the reports while the video uploads, uploads in the background, spits out the link, you throw the link into the email with our general email template that we have for our clients every month. So our team is essentially just pulling up the email template, dropping in the monthly reports, dropping in the link, and um, potentially adding any extra notes if there's anything they just wanted to address with the client as well. And that's like our fulfillment process. It simplified the fulfillment process uh, so much. And so our clients that don't get the videos, they still get the, they still get the reports, they still get a dashboard. Um, but either way, it simplifies for our team from an execution standpoint that regardless of if they get a video or not, the core fulfillment practices are the same. And that's been really key for training our team and building out our standard operating procedures. So as you've kind of moved from one-to-one -one meetings to the video to now moving towards the um, office hour type calls and uh, education portal, uh, what kind of impact has, has all of that had on your operational capacity, your ability to kind of bring on new clients behind the scenes? Oh, I... Susan, I get so excited just thinking about the potential <laughs> of all of this. Corey and I have been talking so much about this. And so for this year, so let's start with this year since that's, you know, we've actually seen the results from that. Um, the amount of hours Corey and I were spending on each individual client, um, you know, before this year, before we had the videos, it was just, it was just unsustained. I mean, our whole time, our whole weeks were spent on calls and it left us very little. It's this, it's this the cliche of a service provider where you're spending so much time doing account work, like client work that um, you don't have time to run the business. Mm -hmm. And so as, because our team has grown quite a bit, we have nine employees total, including Corey and myself. Uh, we need more time to be able to work with the, with the team and train them and uh, again, focus on the operations of the business. And so for us moving to the videos this year um, for us, like, let's say, Five, if I had normally would have had five clients, I would have had to have calls with at the start of the month, which would have been a light month. Those five calls would have been five hours. That now turns into like maybe an hour of work instead. So I've taken five hours and turned it down to an hour. And, and in my mind, I'm still providing a tremendous, well, not in my mind, our clients agree. I'm still providing a tremendous amount of value because the other piece here that um, I think is important for service providers to understand, like our clients that were getting one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one calls with Corey and I every month, I think they understood like, wow, this is a really good deal. I'm going to let this go for as long as I can. Because like, for instance, like our calls go beyond, like it goes beyond just like, are your books good? Okay, cool. Like these become coaching conversations that honestly we see our clients spending 
a lot more money on their coaching and personal development than they mm -hmm. would ever be paying for us to get their books done and to get a call with us. So as we've transitioned out, I think we've done a very good job of positioning the value of the calls and making sure our clients understand the point of these calls, what they're getting from it, and also saying, and also I think the underlying message being like, you know what, you've been working with us for four years, these call like it's not important for us to have a, have these calls anymore. We we want like you said I think before we even got on um, the podcast was that some of our clients weren't showing up to these calls anymore anyways, or you know which screws up our day. We have this time blocked off, and then they miss out on the call and you know ditch us for whatever reason, <laughs> and you know it's like that becomes frustrating and throws a wrench in in how you manage your day. So I think for a lot of our clients, they're like, this is great. I get 15 minutes instead of an hour now. This is more efficient. We don't need to have as much in-depth conversation. So it freed up our time and I think freed up their time as well. And the clients that did want to keep a call because their businesses were bigger or they just really valued our feedback, we charged a higher price for that this year. It's still a killer deal that we're moving away from going into 2020, but we were still able to support some of those clients. So at least Corey and I, like we cut our calls by 75%. So, wow. and going into next year, we're going to probably cut that in half again as well. So um, to where we'll only have, Corey and I will really only have a handful of clients that we have calls with and any new clients that want to do coaching calls with me, they'll only be for a temporary period of time and we'll be charging a premium for those. So, you know, we're, we're really wanting to make sure we're giving our clients an opportunity that if they're willing to pay a premium to get that extra support for one-on-one -on -one stuff, we want it, we want there to be something because I know the impact we can make on them and it's a short period of time that we're working with them. Um, but ultimately it's not going to be a big part of our business model and everything we're going to be doing is pushing people to the group calls and the client learning center, because there's no reason they can't get their answers from those two places. Absolutely. And I think as service providers, we sometimes get in the mindset that having a call automatically delivers value. And I'm not sure that's necessarily true. I think that's kind of a, a preconception that we have that there are so many other ways that we can really deliver that value without having to get on the call and say, okay, great. Um, do you have anything to talk about? I don't have anything to talk about. Do you have anything to talk about? No, I don't either. Um, and having wasted both sides. And I think we, it, from a sales and marketing perspective, we feel like, you know, we're saying, Hey, you get a, you know, a monthly call or a weekly call with me. And that's, you know, that's valuable, but I think it's only valuable if, <laughs> if we're doing something with it and that clients don't necessarily want to, um, you know, we're taking up their time as well as our time when we have those calls and they need to be really valuable and have a point. Yes. And I think <laughs> that comes down to being very focused around what it is you do for your clients. Like what does your service do? And I think this becomes more or a little less clear maybe for like marketing agencies and stuff like that, because uh, they might be doing social media and website and SEO, like they might have a bunch of services, which I would then argue, you know, let's focus let's on talk one service that. and get really good on that. <laughs> but that's another, uh, that's another conversation, but ultimately it makes it easy for us to like, we really understand, like it's taken us years to really get it because we've been trying to think about, like we're trying to reinvent, um, an older service model, which is bookkeeping. And we've been trying to listen to our clients and figure out how do we provide the value that they're looking for and the support they, they're looking for. But again, like we're all trying to figure out without us having to like Corey and I needed to hold their hand. And I think because we're so clear on our clients' pain points, uh, we're so clear on the service we provide and the value that it provides for them that it's made it easier for us to make these transitions and to um, make what feels like sometimes scary moves um, in terms of our service, but end up not being that scary for a client because our clients still feel like, oh, I'm still getting a tremendous amount of value. If anything, I might be getting more value. Um, f and, and, uh, and it's very clear what you're going to be delivering for me. And so that's where I, if I were to sit down with a bunch of different service providers, um, and I'm sure you probably feel the fa same way, Susan, I could probably pick apart, um, what is it you're doing? What is it you're delivering? And why are you delivering it in the way that you're doing it? And I think you're right. Sometimes we go, if I just throw a bunch of stuff on there, it will make the price worthwhile. It's, it'll seem and, better. <laughs> yeah. And ultimately it's like, if I'm working with another contractor or a consultant or something like that in our business, uh, like it's part of what makes me sometimes adverse to coaching and stuff like that. Cause 
Mm -hmm. don't want you wasting my time with conversations. Like I want to focus on what's the solution you're going to provide and how do we most efficiently get to that solution. And that's the type of service I'm attracted to because I want you as a service provider to be really clear on the impact you're going to make in my business and be really clear how we're going to get there. Absolutely. Speak, speak in my language there. I think, <laughs> uh, I use the example I had to, um, a few years ago, I had to hire a business consultant in my corporate job and, uh, I hired him to come in and do a software evaluation. We we're trying to evaluate a new ERP and decide what we were going to go with and come in and, you know, do, do this evaluation for me. Tell me what, you know, should we be using the software we have? Should we upgrade? What should we do? And he came back to me and he's like, I got 41 pages of raw notes for you. I was like, but how I don't, are you going to have time to read that? I don't want 41 pages of raw <laughs> notes. I want, I, I'm paying you to say good decision, not good decision. Like the, ultimately that's what I want. I want a one pager that says, here's why this is the decision you should make. And that's what I'm paying you for. And I think um, there's value in being the expert that takes something that's 41 pages of raw notes and turns it into the one pager. Uh, and totally so, agree. yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that's a, it's a critical piece of being able to be a really powerful value-based service provider. Well, and I think a big thing for the reason we're able to like do the group calls, create the client learning center and do some of these things that will allow us to, to serve more clients, still provide a high, like very high value experience. Um, but also, um, not lose our minds doing it is <laughs> yep. because again, for our service. So for instance, like if you think about a typical, and I'm just going to use our, our, it's what I know best, our business as an example here, but like there was this expectation that a bookkeeper, a bookkeeper is supposed to do your payroll, pay your bills mm. and do accounts receivable. We do none of that. Um, we used to do some of it. And what we realized is this is not the best way to serve our clients because the real issue is most bookkeepers aren't reconciling the data properly. Most uh, bookkeepers aren't um, organizing the, the data in a way that makes sense to the business owner. Most bookkeepers aren't delivering the information um, in a timely manner and in, in a regular manner. And they're not... Um, and they're not explaining or supporting the clients with their questions and helping them understand what's going on there. Well, I think there's there's value in having done something in a niche and being able to still deliver the value regardless of the medium through which you are delivering that. Yes, I would agree. So before we wrap up, is there anything that you think we should talk about that we haven't? Oh, I mean, I mean Susan, we could really a, go that, down the rabbit hole. That, that, that's a tricky question, thing, Susan. But... I can talk all day. This is this is what I was born to do was to talk. So that's a dangerous <laughs> question. But um, I, I think ultimately, you know, everyone that's listening, I think you have to just understand what your customer needs. And if if your business model really means someone needs to get on a call with a client, then I think it's just a matter of like, okay, are we charging the appropriate price for that? Am I able to hire people that can get on a call with a client, right? And, and actually take care of them and do the things that need to be done. Um, you know, cause ultimately we do want service-based businesses that can scale and everyone's service-based business. I truly believe is capable of, of scaling to the level that I think they want to be able to scale to. Um, but I think ultimately, as long as we're doing, um, thinking about our customers first and our clients first and, and delivering results for them. Um, however you decide to do it, I think you just have to be thinking operationally, is it going to be feasible? Are you going to be able to hire the people you need to do these things? And um, is it is it yeah, just going to be repeatable, right? So for in, mm -hmm. our, in our instance, the calls aren't really necessary anymore. But for your business, maybe 15-minute calls are part of it. But someone else on your team can do it. Like I don't want to say use my example and go, yep, everyone stop talking to your clients and <laughs> go to group calls, right? Because I just don't believe there's a one, um, uh, there's one, one size, size fits, fits all. all. Yeah, exactly. But I think ultimately what we're trying to do is listen to our clients, um, listen to their needs, um, and still, again, make changes that allows us to scale but keeps the the value of the experience really high because your business isn't about making it easier for you to run. Your business is about serving your clients and giving them a really good experience. And um, 
not to be a jerk, but we see our clients fire a lot of service providers because that experience isn't meeting their needs or meeting the expectations that are set. So, you know, any service provider who is able to get really clear about this stuff, who's really taking care of their customers and can do so in an efficient and scalable way. Um, yeah, I just think just never lose lose sight of your client's needs and uh, and make sure that internally your operations are super sound so that you can make this a very repeatable experience for every client that comes on. Awesome. Perfect note to end on. So where can our listeners find you if they want to connect or learn more? Uh, if you just look us up at evolvefinance.com, that's a great place to start. Um, we have a podcast called The Bottom Line by Evolve Finance. And um, again, if you just look up Evolve Finance, um, everything on social media will pop up for. Luckily, there's not a lot of Evolve Finance out there, so it's pretty easy to search for. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having me, Susan. Appreciate it. Because Parker and Corey were so in tune with their clients and the specific problem they're solving, they had a solid understanding of the purpose their monthly calls were serving. And because of that, they were able to think about better ways to deliver that same value. The addition of a training resource library is a great example of something that you can set up once. It delivers a ton of value to your clients, but also it doesn't suck up your time except for that one time setup. And if what you're mostly doing during monthly client calls is answering the same questions over and over, having something like a resource library or answers to frequently asked questions can save you massive amounts of time. Evolved Finance is a great example of what happens when you really niche down and become an expert. It makes just about every part of your business easier. When you work with the same kind of client, everyone has the same kinds of problems, the same kinds of questions. And so every aspect of delivering the service can take advantage of economies of scale. And those economies of scale and efficiencies ultimately end up increasing both your profit and allowing you to scale. If you dug this episode with Parker, you're not going to want to miss next week. I'm going to talk to Greg Hickman of System.ly, who's taken this approach one step further. He's basically completely eliminated client meetings altogether and created a done with you service that is basically a one to many service model that feels one to one with almost a bonus mastermind group included. So don't miss that one. Growth is only hard when your business isn't built for it. And unfortunately, the way you assume your business should be built probably doesn't leave much room for growth. Your calendar is full, your pipeline is empty, your systems are backlogged, and you're up to your eyeballs just trying to keep it all together. I hope service entrepreneurs like you boost their profit, save time, and configure their businesses for growth by carefully examining all those have-tos and shoulds that make up the way you've built your business. Together, we find ways to ease your burden while continuing to deliver incredible experiences to your clients. As your growth advisor, I'll show you that you don't have to sacrifice your work-life balance client satisfaction, or quality of work to have a business that's built to grow. You just have to build it different. It all starts with getting clear on your money and your foundational system. I'll help you identify your profit centers, define processes that drive revenue, and create automations that fuel your cash flow. I'd love to talk with you about how you can jumpstart your revenue growth by doing less. To get started, shoot me an email at susan at scalespark.co. From there, we'll hop on the phone and see if you're a good fit for a custom growth blueprint. Again, reach out to susan at scalespark.co. I'd love to help you break through the ceiling. Break the Ceiling is produced by Yellow House Media. Our production coordinator is Sean McMullen. This episode was edited by Marty Seafeld with production assistance by Kristen Runvik. Our theme music is Feel So Fly by The Unders. <laughs>